What is going on, Packer fans? Happy Victory Monday. Welcome into an all-new episode of the Packer Day Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. I am joined once again by Alex Strofe, Perry Goldstein. You can follow him on Twitter at Alex underscore Strofe. You can follow her at Perry underscore Goldstein. Alex, Perry, Packers victory. How the heck are you feeling? It's a victory Monday. I couldn't feel better. How could I feel better? It feels great to win. Winning rocks. I was sick of losing. I love winning. I'm very happy. That's where I'm at. Wow. Beat that, Perry. Beat that. I can't, but uh, this was a good win. This is. I tweeted this out, and this is how I feel. Still, the Packers deserved this win. The Packers outplayed their opponent. The Packers beat the Chargers because the Packers were the better team on Sunday. And it feels really good to say that after a season where they have not had, I think, like any games like that yet. Bears week one. They beat the Bears. Week yeah, one. yeah. Okay, fine. They haven't had a game like that since week one where we are more than halfway through the season. It's been a bleak, bleak season. That is fair. I want to, I want to get to gut reactions. And I know that was kind of like your overarching, like, yay, we won reaction, but I want to get kind of your key takeaway, your gut reaction, whatever you want to put in that category. So Alex, I will start with you since you are very fired up. What was your biggest gut reaction to this win over the Chargers of Los Angeles? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same reaction we've been looking to first every single week, which is the big question of 2023. What is Jordan Love? Is he our guy? Is he not our guy? Uh, this is the second week in a row where I've walked away with the impression that Jordan Love just played his best game as a Green Bay Packer. I thought so against Pittsburgh up until obviously those two late interceptions, but even with those, I thought he played really well overall. I, I felt the same way today, 67% completion percentage, a couple of touchdowns, no turnovers, a 300-yard passing game. We haven't seen one of those in, in almost two years, so that's fun. Um, and, and then the other part of the offensive side of the football is the young receivers coming through, Christian Watson with a touchdown. Uh, obviously, Jaden Reed is exciting, and I've been so stoked on him. It's It's been really fun to watch his breakout the last couple of weeks. Dontavian Wicks might be the number three receiver on this football team. Didn't see that one coming. So just a lot of fun with the with the uh, young pass catchers, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Kraft, too, uh, at the tight end position. So this was one of those games, and maybe the first – since week one, maybe the first three quarters against Atlanta, maybe the fourth quarter against New Orleans, you're sitting here going, okay, I understand the vision today because I haven't all season, but today I do. And that was a really fun offensive performance. Uh, I know it's only 23 points, probably should have been 27, but nonetheless, uh, I was really thrilled with how Jordan Love played and how the offense looked. Not sure why you're moving Dontavian Wicks from wide receiver one down to wide receiver three. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll talk about all of that. Uh, we'll get into all of that today from the wide receivers, Jordan Love. We'll get into it in great detail, but love the gut reaction. Perry, how about you? I feel similarly. Um, I think it's nice to watch this team start stacking successes. Um, we had kind of like a month-long stretch of – pretty abysmal football play and not a lot to point to in terms of what's the future of this team look like. And now it's been, I think, three straight weeks of continuous stock rising for a lot of players on this team and a lot of players that you want their stock to be rising on this team. And I think Alex named a lot of the ones that I would point to, which is Jordan Love, it's Jaden Reed, it's Luke Musgrave, it's Dontavian Wicks, it's, you know, We'll probably talk about Christian Watson, but, you know, him and Romeo Dobbs. It's a couple of the guys on the defensive side of the ball. We got Quay Walker back, Carl Brooks, you know, Lucas Van Ness. Um, we got to see Rashawn Gary finally do some Rashawn Gary things in this game. Just um, all the playmakers that you want to see make plays, made plays in this game. Um, I'm so glad you finally mentioned, I was like, how long is it going to take for us to mention the 300 passing yard game? It took about like three minutes. Um, just, I think... We had so many questions going into the season, and all of a sudden we were like, wow, we might not get any of these answers. But now it's been three weeks of like maybe some like solid actual answers because one game Rams, you know, one game Steelers, you're like, I don't know. But when you start actually getting some level of consistency from this team, you're right, Alex. Like you're starting to actually get an, a picture of what this team could look like in the future. And there's a lot of games left to go, but I think the whole – piece that I take away from this is that everyone's trending. Everyone who you want to be trending in the right direction is trending in the right direction. And biggest takeaway is 
Jordan Love. This was, I totally agree, his best game of the season, statistically speaking, but also just like the way he took care of the football. No turnovers in this game, which was huge for him against what I thought to be a secondary that could give him, you know, a lot of issues. Um, Asante Samuel Jr. and some, you know, some other guys, I think losing Bosa maybe <laughs> helped in that regard, but he faced some good pressure and um, he made some huge, huge throws. So like I said, just if you're watching the video, this is me trending, everyone's trending up. And um, and that's just what we wanted to see this season. So it's really nice to see it continuously happening week after week. I love the excitement from both of you. I have a feeling I'm gonna be a little bit more of the wet blanket I today. There we go. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I wasn't necessarily expecting. Let, let's start with uh, the first one. I think it's it worth acknowledging that Green Bay finally, finally did it in this game. They found the team that could make more mistakes than they could, and that is the, that is the Chargers of Los Angeles. Uh, that's my snarky answer. The, the Chargers made a ton of self-inflicted mistakes, and we'll get to that as well. Um, my positive reaction in this one, and I do agree with a lot of the things that you guys are saying, which, again, we'll get into all in great detail as we go. Um, my positive takeaway in this one is I do think these past few weeks, the the Rams, the Steelers, and the Chargers, two and one, two wins, obviously the loss against the Steelers, was much more the brand of football that I expected from this team all season long. And to be fair, there's really there's four games that really weren't competitive this season. Two in the win column, the Bears and the Rams were really not super competitive games that Green Bay really won from beginning to end. Two on the other side, the Vikings and the Lions, where really the Vikings and Lions controlled from beginning to end. And mo for the most part, we've seen competitive football through the course of the rest of the game. It was frustrating, annoying competitive football against the Raiders and the Broncos, who you sort of expected going in, you were just going to maybe have a much easier time and at least get away with a win, and that didn't happen. But for the most part, it's been competitive football. But these past three games in particular has sort of been everything that I expected. Still dumb, stupid mistakes that you just really want to get cleaned up. Still some missed points, uh, whether it literally be extra points and field goals that you left points out on the field. Some ridiculous fumbles from Aaron Jones and Dontavian Wicks a few weeks ago. Some interceptions last week from Jordan at the end of the game, but also a much cleaner game this week. Just overall, this, but competitive football, offensively, defensively, this is kind of what I expected. And this felt, I think, a lot better through these past few weeks than it did earlier in the season. Partly because you went two and one, but partly just because of the brand of football that we saw on the field. So I think that's the positive. Um, I do think again that that Green Bay got lucky is the wrong word. You make your own luck a lot in the NFL, but again, there were a lot of self-inflicted wounds by the Chargers. There's moments in this game, whether it be Zach Tom recovering a forced fumble by Khalil Mack that saved Green Bay's bacon on that drive, a pass interference to Dontavian Wicks. Uh, you had the Quinton Johnston drop at the end of the game that could have likely been a game-winning touchdown if he hangs on to it. Multiple drops vis-a-vis -vis the, the sun getting in uh, the Chargers players' eyes early in the game, a big fourth down drop on the first drive by the Chargers. There was definitely plenty of that in this game, but I think you saw the signs of progress from some really talented young players as well. What do you, what do you want to say, Barry Goldstein? Sorry, I don't know, man. The Packers didn't have issues with the sun. Like, I don't know. I just... Yeah. The Packers have had games too where the bounce, the ball bounces like not their way either, and they end up losing. I just don't have sympathy. Like that's the NFL for you. I yeah, no, no excuses for self-inflicted wounds. We've been on the other side of this argument several times this year. A million so, percent. Whatever. Also, so, also, Andy, to your point, I'm not sitting here saying this was perfect by any means. I just course. am happy to see like step by step like this week looked better than last week and last week were better than the week before and like each opponent like this is this was a much more difficult opponent than the Steelers and the Steelers were a much more difficult opponent than the Rams and so the fact that the Packers look better each week and better is not perfection but better against more difficult opponents especially as they get into this next stretch is leaves me feeling more confident just the way that they're trending was my point Totally fair. I, I, a ball bouncing in the right direction here. There, I understand. I get to me. It's it wasn't plays that were forced by the Packers in a lot of those situations that caused those mistakes by the Chargers, which is why I have a little less, eh, I have, or maybe more of an eh feeling about it than it, the other way around. But a win is a win. I do wholeheartedly agree with both of you that it is trending in the right direction. I do like much more the brand of football that's been played the past three weeks, and I think there are a ton of positive takeaways. Let's go to Jordan Love, because I think that's, of course, the one that a lot of people want to talk about. 
27 to 40, 322 yards. Alex, as you mentioned, first 300 yard passing game since December 12th, 2021, where Aaron Rodgers threw, I think, for 340 some in that game. I think it was a streak of 31 consecutive games without a 300 yard passer, which seems crazy, uh, but it is uh, the fact. Um, but Jordan ends it. He gets 322 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, 108.5 passer rating. I liked this game from Jordan. Um, but before I get to be wet blanket guy again, Perry, uh, I'll start with you. What was you, what were you most excited about with Jordan in this one? Oh, there was a good amount to be excited about. I think, like I said, it wasn't just like he made one or two wild throws. I mean, I think throughout the game, he made like some pretty consistent, big chunk plays. Um, I think there's like one type of deep ball that's still plaguing him, um, that he still needs to work on like that underthrown ball. I think it was to Dobbs. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I like think was, down, the, down the left sideline. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, to, Dobbs um, yep. to Dobbs, yeah. And that's still a bit of an issue, but you know what? They can get chunk plays in other ways, um, and, and they're showing it, and I think that's great. You know, he could have had more than 322 yards. There were two big plays, one to Musgrave. That was a pretty big miss, and the drop by Wicks. He could have had easily 400 air yards in this game, or 400 yards rather. So um, I think it was just a nice game. And again, I think every week he starts to do a little bit more. I love the, when he makes plays outside the pocket. I think that's like a strength that I talked about a lot over the last couple of weeks that he hasn't been able to do as he gets more comfortable behind that line. Still don't love the line that he's working with, but I think he's just starting to get comfortable with like what's in front of him, regardless of the skill that's in front of him. Um, and I want to see more with his legs, but I love seeing him connect with Christian Watson. Finally, I think they both really needed that from a confidence perspective. So there's a lot to like, um, he, the guys mentioned this a ton in the locker room. And I think you can see it on the field, which is the last thing I'll say is that he remains consistent in terms of his poise. Um, he is unwavering in who he is and how he like handles himself on the field. Um, and I think that says a lot about his character and the guys seem to really rally. They seemed really, really, really pumped for him after the game. And I think that also says a lot. So yeah, a lot, lot of good to take away, but I'll let you be the wet blanket, Andy. Alex, go ahead. I know you were willing to wanting to jump in there too. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, Perry, what you ended with was what I was going to lead with. And I think it's it's the poise. That's something we realized even this preseason. He was pretty darn good in that category. But what are you when you're three and six? What are you when you're losing? What, what are you, you know, when, when you're going on losing streaks? And this week in the locker room, he's talking about how he's encouraging Christian Watson after a couple of rough weeks. And now, obviously, as I mentioned, Watson gets back into the end zone uh, this week. I, I think that's the important part, but now it's translating even more so. Um, you're seeing improvement, and uh, I know growth isn't linear, but it, the last two weeks it has been. He got better in every category. Uh, he didn't turn the ball over. Those are things you're looking for to improve. Uh, we're, we're 10 games into the season now, four and six. The record doesn't tell you everything, but I think when you look at Jordan Love, you feel better about his future as the, as the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers than you did even two weeks ago. And, and I think that's what you hope for. I hope it's not fool's gold and we change our mind over the course of the next couple of weeks because there's some tough games on the schedule coming up on a short week against Detroit and then Kansas City. But overall, I'm really happy with where Love is spreading the wealth. I think 10 receivers caught a pass uh, this week. I like, and I talked about it earlier, but in terms of the receivers, he's he's he does not have the, uh, of the two teams that were on the field on Sunday, he he does not have the better core around him uh, in terms of the skill positions, at least in 2023. And I thought he made more happen with those guys than, than Justin Herbert did on the other side. And that was impressive. Yeah. The other thing I'll add to is in this game, Andy, I know you did your rewatch, so I'm curious if you felt like this when you rewatched it, but I felt like in this game, there wasn't a single throw where I was like, that was risky. I don't know why you did that. Um, like I thought this, the decision-making too continues to be better and better week for week. Yeah. No, no turnover worthy plays other than the the sack fumble, which I don't necessarily put on Jordan. I think Cleo Mack won pretty clean. He went back to pass and just got the ball knocked away from him. So not, not on Jordan on that one, at least in my opinion, uh, outside of that, no turnover worthy plays that I can remember. And I think that is one of the key takeaways much more efficient in this game, 27 to 40, 322, those no interceptions. Did take a couple sacks, did have a bizarro bobbled snap out of shotgun where he kind of fumbled and then recovered on his own and kind of lost them a down in that situation. I like this game from Jordan. I think 
maybe in just where I'm at and maybe in my, you know, cold hearted later days in life, um, I'm losing the ability to get too high or too low on specific things. For me, this is kind of the same Jordan in a lot of ways that I've seen throughout the course of the season. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I'm just saying that I haven't been on as low on Jordan in some of the other games where he's had some of the mistakes and interceptions or things like that. And in the same way, I'm not as like crazy high after this one, specifically because I think some of the things that have plagued him a bit, specifically with accuracy, so the, the Musgrave one cannot be a miss. That has to not only be a hit, that has to be a massive explosive play. That's that's a layup. And when we talk about you got to hit your layups, that is about as easy as it gets for a big explosive play in the NFL. The play to Dobbs that you mentioned, Perry, um, was a, a, an opportunity. There was one to Watson. I, I didn't care quite as much down the field to Watson. Watson wasn't super open. He took a shot at it. Watson didn't track it very well. No, no harm, no foul really on that one. I thought the touchdown to Dobbs, um, slightly underthrown, which he admitted to in his post-game presser. Still a touchdown, not 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 a bad throw by any means. It's a huge game-winning touchdown throw, so I'm not upset by that. But just some some little things here and there still from an accuracy standpoint that kind of gnaw at you. There's another one that he throws a little bubble behind the line of scrimmage to Romeo Dobbs again, and it was the exact same play that happened last week. I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was Reed. It was Reed last week because Reed was the one who it worked fought for the first down and got the five yards and reached out for the first down where he throws it behind Reed and Reed has to adjust behind him and then somehow make his way back up field to get the first down. And this one Dobbs has to reach all the way behind him. And what should have been a five or six yard pickup ends up with a one yard pickup because Dobbs has to Dobbs has to make that adjustment. And as I mentioned on my post-game chat, I'm still very much in the I'm 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 fine with that. Like the, these are things that are still need to get cleaned up. I'm not like uh, massively concerned about it. It's a 27 out of 40 day. You put up some major points, 300 plus yards, really exciting, very efficient, no turnover worthy plays. That's all really, really good stuff. But the same things that I've seen with Jordan that I thought needed to get cleaned up in some of the not so great games are the same things I thought he got needed to clean up in this one. And the same things that I thought he did really well, even in some of those not great games, I thought he did really well again in this one. So not to, again, put this major wet towel on it. I liked this performance. It's really, really fun, really good. Still think it's a step in the right direction. Still think there's a couple things that he needs to clean up and hitting those layups, especially on the big one to Musgrave. You both so mad at me to me. I, like I have that. a question. No, I have a question. Because I yeah. I don't disagree. I'm like, what if this is who Jordan is? Like, okay, yeah, maybe, he gets, maybe he gets a little bit better, right? Maybe, like, the, some of the layups, things start to get a little comfortable. Let's say the Packers get him a more efficient left tackle. He feels a little more comfortable with his blind side. He starts to feel a little bit more comfy in the pocket. Maybe his right guard gets a little bit better. Like, but like essentially this is who Jordan is. Yep. Right? Like we are so our bar is so I was actually thinking about this after the game. Like our bar is so high. Is that good enough for him to warrant being the future quarterback of the Green Bay Packers? Like does he has he shown us enough? It's always the question. I I, I don't I don't know the I'm answer right now. Curious. Like 27 today, 27 of 40. 322, two touchdowns, no turnover, win. You Let say me, yes to that. I, I Yes, I think you say yes to this game. I mean, if you're putting up 322, two touch, two, two tutties, no picks, and any game, yeah, like you'll take that every week. This, no, no, today is yeah. who we see consistently over the course of the rest of the season. You, you answered your question in the uh, – you answered yourself in the question, and here's what I will say. You, 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 you prefaced it with – what if we put all of this perfect stuff around Jordan no. Love? <laughs> he would be a better Jordan Love. And, and but uh, to your point, I think that's where I'm at right now. I think okay. because there are quarterbacks that you know, and we've had them for 30 years in Green Bay, where you don't need the perfect stuff around said quarterback, and they can go out on any given Sunday and make everything else around them better. And that's an insane bar to put on any one period, as you mentioned. Do I think that? with the time with these receivers, as these receivers continue to grow and get better and they figure out the timing and rhythm together, we're even seeing it get better as the course of the season goes along, specifically with guys like Wicks and Reed today. Musgrave has gotten better as of late, meaning not Musgrave's gotten better, that connection has gotten better. Kraft we saw a little bit show up today. Do I think that, um, you know, with a if they actually gave this guy a decent running game, which is, by the way, something that very much needs to be mentioned is that this QB, in his first season as a starting quarterback, has had zero running game to lean on 
the entire season, the entire season, uh, like none. And you, there's been a few bells and like whistles, the, the reverses to read and stuff today where they've been able to manufacture a couple of runs. That's not a consistent running game that you can lean on and just be like, we're going to get four or five yards every, every carry. We don't have to do it. Like that is nothing like that. And he's lived with that. But if you give him a good running game, they continue to progress as like a wide receiver quarterback connection and you give him a left tackle and a right guard and those things around him. Yeah, I think he can be a, a good starting quarterback in this league that can win you football games and maybe even with the right defense and special teams can get you to the promised land. I think that's the case. Um, I think there's three quarterbacks in this league. There's the the one that is like gives you a puncher's chance at a Super Bowl almost no matter what, the one that needs the right conditions around them to be successful and then can give you that chance at a Super Bowl, and the one that even if you give them the, you know, the 49ers and everything they have, it's still like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be good enough. Um, I think he's somewhere in that middle. And I think he's probably someone, if everything stays the same for Jordan, he's, he's a clearly, clearly an NFL starting quarterback, but one you might always just be like, oh, we might, you know, if there's another guy out there, we might have to always kind of take a look and be like, can we get one of those top five, top 10 guys? That's where I'm at. Yeah, I, I think that's a good answer, Andy. Uh, I, the thing I do struggle with is, if the, to use Perry's example, if we get this Jordan Love every game, the grass ain't always greener. And I think that was our worry yeah. going into this season, right? What what can you expect out of a guy you know nothing about who hasn't played in his first three years in the league? Um, what we saw to Jordan Love tonight, tonight was somewhere in what Andy just explained that middle. Uh, and is that good enough? I think you look at, at history, it says maybe. Matthew Stafford and Patrick Mahomes have won the last three Super Bowls. I would say those are above average quarterbacks, but Jared Goff and Jimmy G have each been to one. Recently, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl semi recently. If you put the right conditions around him, and I think today is a good step in that direction, right? When you see the progression out of those guys we keep talking about, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, etc. I, I, look, Andy's being a wet blanket, but he's in like Wednesday of process mode. I'm still two hours after the game over reaction mode. So my answer to you, Perry Goldstein, is yes. I, I would, yeah. I would take this Jordan Love every day of the week. The reason I asked the question is I'm just get I'm like curious the pulse check of where people are at with Jordan at this point. Not I, because I, I have, a, lot. I I have a personal that. like answer to the question. I'm just curious of like the spectrum of where people are at currently. It's moving I think it's, quite I, often for me. It's moving a I lot. Think the biggest thing is that ultimately, even though I'm I'm kind of saying like it's been mostly the same, I still think it's trending in a positive direction. And that's what you exactly want to see. I am still super excited to see what these next, what is it, eight games, six, seven games, seven, seven games seven. Uh, have left to bring. And I'm so excited to continue to evaluate them, even watch the all 22 this week to see what this looked like from a like you know, a holistic side of things, like in, in, yeah. in its entirety, in totality. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm that's where I'm at right now. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be a positive one on this one. I have a really fun one to talk about. I want to talk about overall this Packers rookie class, because I thought in this one, the rookie class stepped up in major ways over and over from Carrington Valentine in the secondary to Carl Brooks getting sacks to Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks coming up with big explosive plays, even not a, not necessarily a uh, rookie in the draft class. And prior, to, and I know he got hurt, but Emmanuel Wilson coming up with a couple plays as a running back, uh, undrafted free agent, Tucker Kraft having something in his bag that I was not familiar with. Uh, knowing that he could pretend, I know he stepped out at the 12, but man, that was almost a freaky fun play. Luke Musgrave had his positive plays. Like I know Anders struggled. I know LVN is still not like popping off the page. I'm not saying it's perfect, but man, some of the stuff from this rookie class was really, really fun and a huge step in the right direction for this team moving forward. Yeah, you just laid it out there, Andy, right? Leading rusher today was Jaden Reed. Leading receiver was, was Wicks. Uh, most pass deflections was Carrington Valentine tied for most sacks was, was Carl Brooks, which by the way, that guy rocks. I'm really excited what he can be in the next couple of years. Um, it, it's, it's overall positive. And yet yeah, Durst, my boy, uh, you're letting us down a little bit here. The Packers still win the game. So actually he's not going to catch as many strays as maybe he should. Uh, but you can't miss extra points and field goals, but nonetheless, the rest of the rookie class, super impressive. And uh, I know you guys are sick of my I, I'm, I'm, I've been telling you so isms when it comes to Jaden Reed. But damn it, <laughs> have I told you so? This guy is so much fun. That end around touchdown was a th Mwah! chef's kiss. I was really excited about that play. But anyway, Perry. 
rookies. Alex, team. take your victory laps all you want when Packers players end up being very good. Like I don't. I do. know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I tweeted out a couple weeks ago that I felt like even through the disgustingness of this Packers product on the field, that you could tell that some of these really young players were going to be great. And I got a lot of hate for it. Like a lot. People are like, what are you watching? What what are what I am not watching the same game as you. And I'm sitting here in this game today and I quote tweeted it and I said, How are we all feeling now? Because development, you said it earlier, Alex, like development is not linear. It takes time. And we're starting to see it kind of come together. And I think, you know, you never wish injury upon anybody and this team has dealt with a lot of injury this season unfortunately but it has led to a lot of opportunity for these young players to step up in really big moments like would Carrington Valentine be starting on the boundary right now if Jair Alexander was playing like well they, he would be now if Rasul Douglas hadn't gotten traded but you know if Eric Stokes was healthy like probably not you know like my point being is that there has been I think extra opportunity for these young guys to start and I think it's ended up being a really good thing for not just their development for us but also for us for Goot for the coaches for everyone to see what they have in these young players because as we've all said this team this year is all about like where where are we steering the ship like and who's gonna be driving it and uh who's gonna be on board for the next couple of seasons because <laughs> some people are gonna be left at the port <laughs> Some people are coming with us on the journey and uh, we need to figure out who they are. And so far, I think Goot has like really knocked it out of the park, um, not just this class, but the second year people too. Um, we are always talking about like the sophomore year jump and a lot of the times it doesn't happen, but like Kingsley, JJ and Ibarre, you know, are two sophomore year receivers. Say what you want about them. I think Dubs has amazing hands. Um, they're starting to use Christian Watson Andy in the ways in which we'd like to see them use him. Um, even like guys like TJ Slayton. I don't know what's happening with Devontae Wyatt. I think maybe we can talk about him a little bit, but like you're starting to see the development. You're starting to see it happen, not just from the rookies, but the second year players too. I'm glad you brought up the receivers. I meant to bring this up when we were talking about Jordan Love, and it's something that I talked about a lot in the the post-game QA. This was the most that I felt all season long that they had the roles right for all of the wide receivers in this offense. And it was awesome. It was freaking awesome because every single one of these wide receivers, one through five, has a very distinct and specific and clear and obvious role, in my opinion. Romeo Dobbs is your possession guy and your guy who can go up and get it. And I, if you're going to throw a jump ball right now, I want that to go to Romeo Dobbs. And he showed it again with the strong hands and the ability to pluck the ball out of the air. And they used him in that way. He had a contested catch early in the game right along the sidelines where he went up, strong hands, got that one. And then, of course, again, the, the big kind of game-winning touchdown. Like, that's where I want him utilized. That's exactly how they utilized him in this game. Christian Watson, I want him on the deep crossing the field patterns where he, where it, there's no, there is no route running prowess that you need. You just need to be fast as hell and you're sprinting and causing chaos. And sometimes that's pure decoy stuff to just draw as many defenders as you can. Sometimes it's the, that you're kind of going across the route and you've got a corner and man, and you just need to burn that guy across the field. Guess who's really good at that? Christian Watson. And then there's other times where you're just screaming through zones. And again, sometimes you're just drawing attention. Other times you're getting through those windows really fast and have the opportunity maybe to be in that second and third window when Jordan needs that. That is exactly how I want to see Christian Watson used. Touchdown Christian Watson in large part because of a play very similar to that. Dontavian Wicks, that dude gets open and separates. He is your traditional wide receiver that if you need somebody to run a strong route, a stop route, whatever it is, and cut on a dime, a third and 19, I knew he drew pass interference on the play, but that's the guy that's going to make you grab him and is going to find ways to separate because he's done it all season long. Malik Heath, a couple awesome blocks in this game. A couple special teams tackles too, by the way. That's another rookie I didn't mention. A couple really nice special teams tackles. That's that he is a great blocker on the outside. They used him to spring Jaden Reed on the uh, reverse touchdown run as a blocker. Perfect chef kiss. 
And then, of course, Jaden Reed, who is Mr. Extraordinaire. You can give it to him on the jet sweeps and the reverses. You can get it to him in the slot. He's finding the ways to make explosive plays. You can get it to him down the field. That's a little bit more of a guy that you can probably trust with a variety of different things at the moment. But they spammed him a little bit more, gave him those opportunities, and he came up big with it. But those are five receivers who have five very distinct roles, and they use them perfectly and that was what was super exciting to me and another huge takeaway for me in this one. Yeah. And you want to talk about if anyone out there still doubting Matt LaFleur, if you heard after the game, the touchdown of Christian Watson was totally drawn up mid-game on the sideline for him. He, he, did, give, he did give credit to the tight ends coach, uh, John Dunn, for drawing that or for coming up with that idea. Um, and then they kind of drew it up and he gave it to Jordan and stuff like that. So um, in classic Matt, Mo, uh, you know, fashion, he gave credit to those. But uh, yeah, so Jordan gave credit to Matt. Matt gave credit to John Dunn. Either way, how it got from John to Matt, Matt to Jordan, Jordan to executing it on the field. That's the good stuff, right? You've got an yeah. assistant coach that sees something going through the film and sees, says like, hey, they did this. We should counter it with this. And then he goes to Matt and Matt isn't like shut down and be like, oh, I got my play sheet here. It's not something we practiced all week, yada, yada, yada. He goes with it and figures it out and says, yeah, let's fight, figure out a way to get that in. They they draw it up to the team on the sideline and say, this is what we're going to run. And then the players, especially a young team that's not used to just doing things on the fly that they didn't practice yeah. all week, that's not game planned, that's not a play in their playbook and goes out and executes it and gets a touchdown out of it. Like I said, that's the good stuff. That's really that's fun awesome. stuff. All right, let's – oh, Alex, were you going to say something? I was just going to ask because we were talking about this in the pregame show uh, on ESPN Wisconsin WTMJ on Sunday, and it's it's a simple question. It's something we have debated in, in the summer. But, like, the Packers play on Sunday Night Football in two weeks against the Chiefs. They do the player intros. Um, who's, in your opinion, wide receiver-wise, should come up first? Who should be wide receiver one uh, if you were making the depth turn? Who's the best receiver on this team? I would, I would say Romeo Dobbs. Um, I'm not. Let, let me answer that in two different ways. If you're asking me who should be wide receiver one, introduces wide receiver one, I would say Romeo Dobbs. If you're asking me who's the best wide receiver on the team, I don't honestly know how I want to answer that. Um, and what I'll also say something I said in the, the Q&A after, I don't care. I don't care which one of these guys is one, two, three, four. It, it, it matters not one iota to me. Use them the way we just talked about. Use them with their specific roles in the skill sets that they are good with and don't try to put a square peg in a round hole and ask, you know, who might like Jaden Reed to be the outside guy that's making jump balls on the outside, even though he actually did jump balls well in college. You, you know what I mean? Like give them the stuff that they're good at. And I don't care how that ends up. And today we saw Jordan love 10 different receivers that he gets, you know, that get the ball, um, you know, 10 different targets that get the ball and it's all spread around and everyone's having success with it. And that's, that's what I want to continue to see. All right, I think that's a fair answer, but you buried me on Twitter earlier this week. Now you just buried me on the podcast. Uh, I care. I don't care if you care. What's your answer? I uh, I only buried you once on Twitter. I didn't bury you here. Uh, for those wondering, uh, Alex, is a former, Alex is a closet Viking, um, yeah. and we need to address it. Uh, Alex is a Viking at heart. He is a Denmark Viking, uh, and I tweeted out because I was at Denmark High School for a basketball game. And their logo is a huge Minnesota Viking figure. And all of their colors are purple and yellow. Mm -hmm. And I, I tweeted at Tony Evers, 95% jokingly, uh, that the Vikings should be banned in the state of Wisconsin. Why is there a team called the Vikings, a high school team called the Vikings, wearing purple and yellow in my state? It is abhorrent. And I think we can all agree is politically the worst thing that's going on in the world right now. I just can't agree with that. <laughs> Uh, onward Denmark, but anyway, uh, you you still eluded the question I was asking you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Perry instead. Jaden Reed's the best receiver on the team. I'm kind of with Andy. I'm not sure I care, and I also feel like NFL offenses are a little bit moving away from this like traditional sure. X Y, you know, like slot receiver. Like if you get yards and my team wins, I'm not sure I care. It's a fun group. We don't know a ton about them. That's why I bring it up. Sorry to derail. Let's continue. Oh, I, I, have, a, I have a counter because I, I actually was almost going to post this on Twitter. All right. You can have one group of wide receivers. Or and luckily, Green, Green Bay gets all of these for the next three years, so you don't have to actually make the choice. But for the next three years, you can either have – you're starting a new team, new brand new team. You can either have Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, or you can have Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks. Which oh. two would you rather have? Phenomenal. Um 
I, it's probably recency bias, but I'm taking Wix and Wix and Reed, and I'm really I'm Rix, you guys know. I'm going Rix and Weed. Rix and Weed. Wix and Reed is what I meant to say. That Rix and Weed I'm going, too. I'm going Wix and Reed as well. It's my answer. Perry, that's tough. I'm probably going Watson and Dobbs. Sorry. Let's we're we're gonna mark it down on the Alex Perry Andy board of shame. That's uh, not an easy answer though. I totally we, agree. Alex and Andy say a lot to the state of this current Packers wide receiver. Yeah, that's what I said. The fun thing is they get all four of them for the next yeah. three years. Like that's yeah. not too shabby. They're gonna um, be nasty in a few years. They're gonna be all right, guys. We still have like seven things to get through. For all this right, forgot, yeah, forgot it was past your bedtime. Right, we'll, Our apologies. Really quick, Packers defense. Well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> All right, we, we don't have to. We don't have to. Um, this is going to go quick. back to the beginning where I said there's some wet blanket stuff where Here, they, Here's they, my they, opinion they on this Packers defense. They play the worst situational defense in the NFL. Like, they – well, I shouldn't say that. They made one great third down sack. That was awesome. Kenny Clark <laughs> probably, added the ball at the end. Kenny Clark, yeah. the, Kenny Kenny Clark added ball. the ball. Great. Thank you. Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith, you combined for a sack on Justin Herbert. But, like, if Quentin Johnson actually catches that ball, which he should have, like, this game <laughs> probably looks very different. So I just have a really – I mean, everything state is still the same. Like, this defense is still – this defense, it's just the situational defense is so abysmal. But there's one stat, not to be Johnny Box score, but there's one stat I look at every week just because I'm curious about it. The Chargers, you like that? The Chargers average 6.8 yards per carry today. 6.8. It's unacceptable. And, and over 150 yards again on the ground uh, defensively. It's just, it's every week. It's every week for the last, like, decade, it feels like. Anyway, that's the one stat from Johnny Box score. Yeah, I'm... I was toying with maybe giving a few complimentary things. I, I I don't think so. I don't think this was good enough for the defense. I will say this. I, I tweeted this out prior to the game. Your five preferred starters in your defensive backfield going into the season would be Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, Razul Douglas, Darnell Savage, and Rudy Ford. They didn't have any of them in this game against Justin Herbert and a pretty decent offense. Let's put it that way. They got away with one, um, but they they challenged the Chargers more uh, specifically in the passing game this week than I think they have in, in previous weeks. And I will take that as a semi-sign of progress. I thought some guys stepped up big. But by the way, uh, Corey Ballantyne, let's just take a second. And I know Carrington Ballantyne's the one that's got the energy and is really, really fun and exciting. He's a rookie and all of those sort of things. Corey Ballantyne, for being, lack of a better term, a completely forgotten person on this Packers practice squad, if he was ever going to be on the team was never meant for anything more than special teams. The job he's done as a starting outside corner these past few weeks, I'm not saying it's the sexiest brand of football in the world. It has been pretty darn effective, all things considered. And I do think he deserves some credit. So some positives, but I think we know there's still a long way to go from a Packers defensive point of view. Any concerns long-term with Anders Carlson? Just some rookie hiccups. Where are you guys at with that? No, I'm not worried. Rookie, rookie hiccups, and I think we knew they were coming, and I think they took longer to come than we probably expected watching him in the preseason and training camp. So yeah. I think it's rookie hiccups. Uh, I'm not calling Mason Crosby quite yet. And no. kicker is so high variance. It just – it happened. I mean, we watched Mason Crosby struggle through, like, sure. whole season. And, like, he doesn't have the same benefit of the doubt, obviously, as Mason, but you never know. I'm with you. Offensive line rotation uh, continued. Yash and Rashid Walker at left tackle. I'm, I'll be interested to see if one of them stood out more than the other. I'm still very much in uh, flip a coin, pick one. Don't care anymore. They're both going to need help. They're both substandard. I don't care. Um, right guard to me is more interesting. I thought Runyon had another really bad game on rewatch. Sean Ryan gets one drive. They score a touchdown on it. Another one I'm really interested to watch on tape. Like. I need I need more Sean Runyon, uh, Sean Ryan, not Sean Runyon, Sean Ryan in my life. Um, just combining things at this point. That's where I'm at 40 minutes into the episode. I need more Sean Ryan in my life, and I'm ready to be done with the uh, John Runyon Jr. experience. Yeah. I'm so frustrated. 
so frustrated with the offensive line. I mean, this is so par for the course of the Packers, though. They always take way longer. Like, the fans are always, like, calling for player changes. And then the Packers take, like, 12 weeks. And then they finally make the player change. And then things are great. And we're like, we've been asking for this. Um, I'm just at the point where I think left tackle or left tackle of the future, regardless of whether Bakhtiari comes back next season or not, uh, needs to be like priority one for the draft. Rushing uh, behind that offensive line, Aaron Jones, four for 14, Manuel Wilson, three for 12, Dylan, 14 for 29. Um, they got kind of bailed out a little bit by, you know, the, the two big runs by Jaden Reed on the reverses. Other than that, could not run the ball at all. And that is still, and this is a bad, 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 bad Chargers defensive line. If they can't run against that defensive line, it's probably just not happening this year, which is very, very frustrating. And again, would be really nice to see Jordan if he actually had a running game to go along uh, alongside of him, which has not been the case all year, as we mentioned. Injuries, obviously another huge story in this game. Aaron Jones goes down with what looked like a brutal injury. We got great news after the game. ACL is intact, according to the initial assessment. Matt does not believe it's going to be long-term. Sounds like he dodged a major bullet. That is the relief of all relief because that's the last guy you want to see go down with that type of injury. Um, just, again, for the player that he's been, for the person that he's been, all of it, you just want to see that guy be able to get back up. So hopefully he'll have an MRI on Monday, but hopefully he continues to get good news there. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson goes down with a shoulder injury. Dontavian Wicks late in the game goes out with uh, getting tested for a concussion. Huge deal because if he did have a concussion, he's a complete no-go for Thursday with on the short week. So that will be worth monitoring. Josiah DeGuara went out, and as far as I could tell, did not return in this game. Devondre Campbell went out, and as far as I could tell, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think he returned in this game either. So Jones, Wilson, Wicks, DeGuara, Campbell. Meanwhile, Jair Alexander and Rudy Ford still did not play in this game and were inactive going in, and they have a game on Thursday. Thoughts on the injuries? Is that it? That's it. <laughs> Just those. Nothing major. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shortly. On a Alex? short week. Hey, well, welcome to 2023. I mean, that's that's been it's been the theme all, all damn year. And it's it's as frustrating and, and as much as you feel for a guy like Aaron Jones, who just yeah, I feel for him, man. He's he's the he's the biggest playmaker and, and, and game breaker this offense has. And Hasn't been able to get on the field a, a whole lot, so it's good. It's it's good. It's not super serious, but then you remember the Packers play in a short week, as, as Andy just mentioned. They play Thursday, uh, so mm -hmm. the running back room is is number one. What I'm looking at, uh, given given a short week, but uh, yeah, it sucks. It, but welcome to 2023. Let's I think my biggest. Way. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say my my biggest takeaway one is I'm so glad it's not serious because when I saw him crying on the field, I was like, he just tore his ACL. So that's good. Second is, you know, you, when you lose two running backs, you're thinking, okay, who's up next? Now I know they have Patrick Taylor on the practice squad. Nope. No, they, he's they gone. Ellis Merriweather, Ellis Merriweather is the only running back on the Packers practice squad. So get your Great Ellis name. Merriweather, uh, you know, okay. film going. There are two running backs that make sense to me that the Packers could uh, maybe. He didn't even let me ask the question. Yep, that's why. That's how ahead of you I am, Perry Goldstein. There's three running backs that can make sense here. Uh, Patrick Taylor is on the Patriots practice squad, mm -hmm. and they could sign him to the active roster and get him back. Easily makes the most sense because if you think of the job description this week, it's going to be a lot of third down and pass protection stuff with Dylan getting the bulk of the yeah. workload. So to be able to bring him in on a short week, somebody that knows the offense, can pass protect, can catch the ball to the backfield, and has been here for years – it's, it's a no-brainer. I would be pretty damn shocked if Patrick Taylor is not on the 53-man roster as of Monday or Tuesday. Option number two, Tyler Goodson, currently on the Indianapolis Colts practice squad. Doesn't fit the job description quite as well. A little bit more of a playmaker. A really nice sort of thunder and lightning with A.J. Dillon and Tyler Goodson potentially. Don't hate that. Like the idea. Knows the offense. He's been around for multiple seasons. That would be option number two. Option number three, James Robinson just was in uh, Packers practice squad over the course of the past couple weeks. They moved on from him relatively quick, which is probably not a great sign and picked up Ellis Merriweather instead, but at least he had a couple weeks with that Packers offense, probably knows a little bit of the terminology. And here's the issue. 
If you do sign a player off of an opposing team's practice squad, that is a three week period that you have to pay for them and basically keep them uh, as a, like one of your 53 man roster players. So if they didn't want to commit three weeks to a player, having James Robinson, at least have been here for a couple weeks, that could be something too. I would also just expect Ellis Merriweather to be uh, moved up from the practice squad to the active roster on game day this week. So those are your likely options in my opinion. I think they likely take someone that knows the playbook, yep. but you missed a really key fourth option. Who am I missing? Well, they're already in the building and they know the playbook really well and they're explosive as hell. I think definitely more of a John third Kuhn? now. John Kuhn? Oh, Simone Biles, talk. <laughs> <laughs> How good a running back would she be? Suit her up. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm, I'm in on it, yeah. Get, get, here's what I want to see on like a third and one instead of like a tush push, just like doing like a simple backflip over yeah. like everything. You I think that's does. illegal. I think they got Quay for that a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Only one Do way we to get out. Keith on on like literally all three faces? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's, I that's where, that's the they don't have corners. They don't have corners, but I wanted some Keyshawn at running back. No questions asked. He's doing uh, too Packers, much. Packers, as of recording this, are currently selecting number nine overall in the draft. Uh, I don't know, like, I don't think the Vikings game can affect it. I don't know if the Broncos game can affect it or, like, the, the results of those. They are still theoretically alive in the playoff hunt as of right now, just on the outside looking in. Uh, again, this one actually depends if the Vikings lose or not. I think they're winning right now. Uh, but, yeah, um, that one could – but they're, they're actually – if the Vikings lose this one, they're, like, a game out of the playoff race. So – Number nine pick, also involved in the playoff race. Who would have thought? Fun times. Alex, really quick, thoughts on Packers-Lions on Thursday? Don't look now. Uh, yeah, look, this is a team that the Lions I'm talking about that got that got tested pretty darn good by the Chicago Bears on, on Sunday. It's a short week. It's Thanksgiving. It's weird. Um, the Packers are going to be injured, as we just pretty much wrapped up the episode on. Uh, I expect the Packers to lose, uh, but I don't expect a repeat of what we saw a couple of Thursdays ago, which was wire-to-wire uh, -wire domination by the Lions. I think Jordan Love looks like a, a different quarterback than what he looked like in that Thursday night game a couple weeks back against Detroit. Uh, it's it's a fun gauge too, right? Obviously, this is the first time you're seeing an opponent for the second time in 2023. So even if it is a loss and, and you're stuffed with turkey and stuffing, uh, you can still have a pretty good sense of where the Packers were versus where they were two months prior uh, when they played uh, the Lions. I think that was, what, week four of the season? So that's that's what I got my eyes on. It's a little bit too early. I'm just riding high on a victory Monday. Um, I'll come down from some of the things I said today. Uh, a little bit overreactionary, but uh, I'm feeling good after uh, after a big win over the Chargers on Sunday. It'd be great if, like, all season long, after not being able to run the ball all year, Ellis Merriweather drops like 40 carries for like Dude, 250 that, here's yards. Here's the thing: it it, it is it's such a turkey. thing. It is such a Thanksgiving name. Ellis it Merriweather is. is a Thanksgiving name. I mean, it, it, it is a, if, if the NFL is scripted, it's the Alice Merriweather game. Put them in your fantasy lineups, everyone. It's Ellis, uh, happy Alice Merriweather week. Perry, <laughs> final thoughts and thoughts on Packers Lions? I'm with Alex. I'm kind of booking it as a loss. I think it's maybe to like hedge my bets for my like emotional well being on Thanksgiving, like family plus, plus a Packers loss. I don't know. Um, I do think it is an interesting litmus test. Thank you for laughing, Andy. Um, the bar is pretty low, so if they play worse than the first time, not great. Um, so you, they can really only play better than the first time they lost to the Lions, but, um, look, I'm just, like, here, I'm um, again, I'm, I'm sorry to bring you down, Alex, from how, you know, hype you are in this win, but I'm really just here for, like, the incremental improvements, <laughs> so just look a little bit better than you did last week, and if that means losing, and it likely will against Lions, because Lions are a very good team, you know, winning a game when you throw three picks, I think, right, the Bears turned the ball over three times with Jared Goff, like, that's still, even if it's the Bears, that's still, like, really impressive. The Lions are a very gritty, well-coached team that is likely going to 100% going to the playoffs. So just look a little bit better this time, and I'll be a happy girl stuffed with turkey. Four turnovers My, for the uh, for the Lions, by the way, today. A fumble as well as uh, on top of and they And they still won. I mean, that that's really impressive. And, and scored 31 points as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They scare me. They should. My, uh, 
my fan fiction scenario from earlier this week is still in play. I mentioned that last year the Packers were three and six, had an improbable win against the Cowboys at home, lost their next two games, then reeled off four straight, and then had an NFC North opponent with an opportunity to go in the playoffs in the last week of the season. They were three and six this year. They had an improbable win against the Chargers. They're going to go 0 and 2 against the Lions and Chiefs. They're going to reel off four straight, and then they're going to have the Bears at home with an opportunity at the play. Or actually, the Bears on is it at home? Yeah, Bears at yeah, yeah Bears at home with an opportunity at the playoffs in the last week of the season. You just wait. That was four. That four game win streak, by the way. Giants, Bucks, yeah. Panthers, Vikings. Not super yeah. improbable. Not yeah. super improbable. Losing we're, the next. We're, not we're in R-E-L-A-X territory right now. It's going to be interesting. It's Jordan interesting. Love run the tables uh, in his first season as a starter. Are you kidding I'm me? Just saying, we are in R-E-L-A-X territory. I want the Ellis Merriweather game, and I want Jordan Love run the table. That's, that's we're what getting I want. Out here. We're, getting, we're getting punchy. We're getting weird. That's our cue that we got to get <laughs> out of here. It has been absolutely fun, as always. Alex, where can we find all of your amazing work on Ellis Merriweather Week? <laughs> yeah, happy Ellis Merriweather Week to all who celebrate. Uh, you can get me on X, Twitter, at Alex underscore Stroh, promotion of the podcast, all the programming I do with, with ESPN Wisconsin. You can find it on Twitter. What's the official food of Ellis Merriweather Week? Uh, it's, it's turnovers? Be, yeah, turnovers. Uh, I was going to go like a cranberry sauce because it's it's like really underappreciated, but it's actually not that bad. Like that's, no. that's how I view Ellis Merriweather. Deal. Perry? Where can we find all of your amazing work? Don't even know what this dude looks like. Uh, I don't even know what number he wears. Um, you, can follow, you can follow me on Twitter at Perry underscore Goldstein. I host another podcast with Maggie Loney. She is back this week, so we'll have our Chargers recap together. Uh, follow us at Pax, which she said podcast, wherever you find all podcast things and Twitter. Find me at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Packaday Podcast. Go follow Alex. Go follow Perry. Do your Perry. I almost said Perry Mayweather. Do your Ellis Merriweather or Perry Ellis. That would have been better. Do your Ellis Merriweather homework, everyone, this week. We will see you right back here tomorrow. We've got Justice Mosqueda coming up. We've got Paul Brettel coming up. It's going to be a short week. It's going to be a fun-filled week. Everyone enjoy it. I'll talk to you guys soon. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.